Hi, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to do an EKG review. We're going to look at, specifically, ventricular arrhythmias. The arrhythmias we're going to review include PVCs, or premature ventricular contractions, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular flutter, and ventricular fibrillation. Let's begin with PVCs, or premature ventricular complexes. Premature ventricular complexes are noted on an EKG when you see widened QRS complexes, where the QRS duration is greater than 160 milliseconds, or four small boxes. Usually, there's no P wave prior to the PVC, unless the PVC occurs very late. The PVC will cause ST segment and T wave repolarization abnormalities. So identifying ischemia or infarction after a PVC is difficult. PVCs are commonly followed by a sinus pause. The reason why is the AV node becomes refractory to further electrical activity because it was just activated by the PVC. PVCs can be characterized further into three groups. They are ventricular bigeminy, ventricular trigeminy, and ventricular couplets. Let's talk about each of these groups. Ventricular bigeminy. Bigeminy occurs when a PVC follows each sinus beat. This abnormal beat can become self-perpetuating, meaning when the ventricle fires causing this PVC to occur, it enters an aberrant electrical pathway, creating an infinite loop. So the ventricle activates the atria, which comes back down to the AV node to the ventricles, back up through this aberrant pathway to the atria, so on and so forth, goes round and round. Thus, ventricular bigeminy can decompensate into a more severe arrhythmia of ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Now, ventricular trigeminy is when you have two sinus beats that are followed by a PVC. So essentially, every third beat is a PVC. You'll note on the strip below, you'll see two normal beats and then a very large QRS complex. This large QRS complex is the PVC. And the coupling of these beats together is what are called trigeminy. Now, ventricular couplets. Ventricular couplets are when there are two similar looking PVCs in a row that are usually followed by a sinus pause. You'll see here in this strip that you have these two wide QRS complexes, each being a PVC that look very similar, and then a small pause that occurs after it. This is a ventricular couplet. Now let's talk about the management of PVCs. So realize most of us have infrequent PVCs but we do not usually experience symptoms. And we don't walk around with cardiac monitors looking at the rhythms of our heart throughout the day. So generally PVCs are benign, but in patients who are having frequent PVCs, especially if they have a cardiac history, you wanna do the due diligence of checking electrolytes. In patients in the hospital with a cardiac history, you wanna maintain a potassium greater than four and magnesium greater than two. You want to reduce the medications they may be taking that could be causing hypokalemia, meaning low potassium, or hypomagnesemia, meaning low magnesium. If a patient is having frequent PVCs and they have a cardiac history and also are symptomatic, such as chest pain or pressure or shortness of breath, you want to do a workup for ischemia slash infarction, such as obtaining an EKG and getting troponins. PVCs can develop into what's called ventricular tachycardia. When you have three or more successive PVCs, this is called ventricular tachycardia. VT can be characterized as non-sustained or sustained. Non-sustained VT lasts less than 30 seconds and is not associated with hemodynamic compromise or hypotension. Sustained VT lasts greater than 30 seconds and many times is associated with hemodynamic compromise or hypotension. The rate of VT is usually greater than 120 beats per minute. 
You can see in the strip below what VT looks like. It's a wide, complex rhythm that is generally regular, and the complexes appear identical. VT can be characterized as monomorphic or polymorphic. Monomorphic means all the QRS complexes appear the same. Polymorphic means QRS complexes appear different. Polymorphic VT can be due to ischemia and or infarction. Note that non-sustained VT is a marker for risk of developing sustained VT and a risk factor for developing sudden death. Polymorphic VT is an unstable arrhythmia and must be defibrillated. Let's talk about the management of ventricular tachycardia. There is a CAST trial known as the Cardiac Arrhythmia Suppression Trial, where they use flecainide and enconide to suppress arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia to see if this improved mortality rates. They noted that these antiarrhythmics did not improve mortality and actually caused an increase in mortality among the participants. In addition, the BOT trial, known as the Beta Blocker Heart Attract trial, showed that propranolol improved mortality outcomes in patients with non-sustained VT, likely because it causes AV nodal blockade, preventing these PVCs from decompensating into more serious rhythms. In terms of the use of antiarrhythmics, commonly we use medications such as amiodarone. And amiodarone generally does a very good job of suppressing these arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia. But note, amiodarone has no mortality benefit. A trial called the MANIT-1 trial, a multicenter automatic defibrillator implantation trial, showed that patients with an EF less than or equal to 35% had improvement in mortality when an ICD was placed. If a patient has a normal EF, with no symptoms or signs of heart failure, pharmacological therapy is generally acceptable. You can use medications such as procainamide, which is a class 2A antiarrhythmic, or lidocaine, which is a class 2B. I generally use lidocaine, and it generally works very well. It's very important to note that you should only use one agent, if you can, because of the adverse effects of combination therapy. From personal experience, I know that amiodarone as an antiarrhythmic sometimes doesn't cut it to prevent episodes of ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. In patients that are refractory to amiodarone alone, I generally add on lidocaine in drip form to act as a second antiarrhythmic. Generally, the combination of amiodarone and lidocaine helps me suppress these episodes of VT or VF so I can stabilize the patient until I can get to the point where the patient is healthy enough to undergo defibrillator placement. Now that we've talked about the management of ventricular tachycardia, let's talk about torsades. Torsades is the twisting of points. Torsades is called the twisting of points because the QRS axis always changes. Torsades is a type of polymorphic VT that is associated with QT prolongation. It looks like a large sine waveform. Here's an example of torsades in an EKG. You'll notice the large QRS complex that is ever changing from getting smaller to bigger, appearing like a sine graph on this EKG. Now let's talk about the management of torsades. Torsades should be treated like unstable ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. But remember, torsades is highly responsive to IV magnesium. So if you recognize this rhythm on an EKG, yes, you should undergo the same ACLS protocol we do when we have any unstable rhythm. But also consider giving IV magnesium to help break the patient from the rhythm. Now let's talk about ventricular flutter. Ventricular flutter is a type of ventricular tachycardia that occurs at a rate greater than 250 beats per minute. You'll notice there's no lack of P waves, and it just looks like these large QRS complexes that appear identical and regular, 
going on the EKG. V flutter is very unstable, which brings me to the point about ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation also is a very unstable rhythm with no form QRS complexes and with no P waves. The rate is usually greater than 250 beats per minute with random changes in appearance. Because the rate is so fast, blood is not pumped out of the heart very effectively and to the coronary circulation. So this can lead to cardiac arrest very quickly. Here's an example of ventricular fibrillation on a rhythm strip. You'll notice the coarse undulating QRS complexes that have no rhyme or reason to them. Ventricular fibrillation must be defibrillated. Pretty much any ventricular arrhythmia that leads to hypotension should be defibrillated. All right, that was a brief review of ventricular arrhythmias. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have a comment or suggestions for future videos, place them down below and subscribe. Also, check out uh, my website at www.medpulse.org where I post little tidbits about various disease pathology, treatments, quizzes, and other videos that you won't find here on my YouTube channel. This is Dr. K from my medical school. I'll see you next time.